So hello, hello. It's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. I'm so excited to share this project with you today. Holy smokes, guys. Look at this. This is a technique called stained glass that my um, one of my team members, uh, Barb Harper, Hopper Price shared during a virtual team meeting that we had earlier this month. We, I've started this here in 2019 with my um, team because I have over 100 team members who are spread out all across the country. And so I started doing virtual team meetings once a month where we gather on Facebook and I talk about all the new um, news that's going on with Stampin' Up! We do some business tips and we also have some demonstrations and so Barb shared um, a project like this this technique and I just loved it and I knew I wanted to do it with my stamp club so this is called stained glass I've got everything cut and ready to show you but I'm gonna first introduce some of the supplies I do have a full list in the video description so you can get the item numbers and everything but we're going to use this um, multi-purpose adhesive sheet. It comes like this, six by 12 pieces, and this is retiring, it's being discontinued. It's on the last chance list, so make sure if you don't have any of this yet, make sure that you, that make sure you order some, because it's going away. So I cut this size here, three by four is what I did. So I got um, six pieces from one sheet, so six cards, and then the package comes with 12 sheets, okay, so if you were using this only for this card and doing it just like I did, 60, 72, 72 different cards just out of the one package. You'll probably want more than one package. Um, I'm also using a window sheet. These come in 12 by 12. The item number is um, also in the description. And then a piece of white cardstock. So all these are cut the same size, three inches by four inches. Okay, the stamps that I'm using is called Beautiful Day. This is, I think, going to carry over, so it's not going to retire, but it's so gorgeous. It's a rubber stamp set, and um, the, the images are quite big, so there's a nice flower and then the um, butterfly. This is perfect for this technique because you have the nice sort of bold lines. It's easy to color in, so any kind of line art where you have some easy lines to color. Uh, because we're stamping on the window sheet, we're using Stays On ink. You know, there's two different kinds of black ink that we care. We have the um, the stays on. Is this retiring? Oh my heavens! I feel like someone said that it was. I'm just gonna do a, a quick check off camera. I'm just glancing at my new catalog just to see. Um, my printer broke, so I have not printed the um, the retiring list out yet. Stays on is not gonna retire. It's still in the catalog. So we've got two types of black ink. Stays on is a solvent ink, and then the memento ink is like a it's like a hybrid ink, right? I think it's like a dye. I'm looking to see what it says. Mm -hmm. Water based, yeah. So it's like a water based ink. Okay, so the memento ink is what you want to use with the stamp and blends because these are alcohol markers. So th because the memento ink is a water based like dye ink, if you use watercolor, it would blend the lines of the memento. You wouldn't see it. So if you're going to watercolor, you want to use the stays on. It's a solvent ink and it's permanent, so it's not going to bleed when you're watercoloring. However, you don't want to use stays on with the blendabilities, or not the blendabilities, the Stampin' Blends, because it'll do the same thing. It'll bleed the lines. So Stampin' Blends get memento, and then watercoloring with the stays on. The stays on also, as the name implies, stays on. So it's really good for stamping on things like the plastic. Okay, so we're not using the memento, but we are using the blends. And I just said you can't mix the two, but we're gonna stamp on the window sheet and then color on the other side. So the blends will not actually mix with the stays on ink. So let's go ahead and get started. Look at these gorgeous colors I picked out to use. I'm using Rich Razzleberry Daffodil Delight and um, Bermuda Bay. Let me give you the measurements really quick. It is five and a half by eight and a half for the card base. Then the Daffodil Delight is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So it's going to layer on there. And then one and a half by five and a half is the, um, the Bermuda Bay piece. I also incorporated a little bit of the 
glittered organdy black ribbon. This was in the holiday catalog, but it's still available and it's gonna carry over to the new catalog. So I'm super excited. It's not just for Halloween, even though it was part of the Halloween suite. Um, it's really, really, really pretty and elegant for, for lots of occasions. And I really like the way it kind of ties in the black on this card. So we're gonna use a little bit of that as well. And then here's the secret ingredient, aluminum foil. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the aluminum foil. Let's go ahead and start with some stamping. Move these cards out of the way. We're using the stays on ink. We're going to stamp on the white and we're going to stamp on the stays on using that giant butterfly from the um, Beautiful Day stamp set. Um, last night I thought there was such a big stamp I thought I would turn the ink over and go like this. I ended up dropping the ink pad in my lap. Yeah, stays on ink in my lap. <laughs> on my jeans. I think I got most of it out because I tended to it right away and I I just got like it kind of bounced so it was like just the line but talk about a panic. That was scary. <laughs> All right I'm stamping on the window sheet. Now the window sheet is slick. It's slippery. So with the stays on ink uh, you don't want to to like you know push it because it could smear. So I'm just kind of giving some good um pressure a good impression and peel it off you got a i have a little smearing here but it's not terrible um and and actually when i cut it out i can kind of cut the extra the extra off the edge okay then we're going to stamp on the white and when i made this oh i'm off center a little bit Man, that kind of drive me crazy. Let's just turn that over. Let's try it again. Uh, I was making this last night, making up my sample, and my daughters were at the table. We were getting ready for dinner, and they went nuts. They were like, oh, my gosh, I want to make one. <laughs> and so they, they were so excited to get to color their own stained glass butterfly. Okay. Now, after the stays on has a minute to dry, I think it is okay, you're gonna turn it over and we're gonna color on the other side. Oh, it might be a little wet, it's, oh well. All right, we are going to color with the blends, not the, yeah, the Stampin' Blends. I'm just feeling so frazzled. On top of the dogs, then my mother-in-law called with an update about my father-in-law who is not well. It's not well. He is in the hospital right now and is not listening to the doctors. So, I'm gonna have to call and yell at him later. Okay, this is Rich Razzleberry. And then we're gonna do Daffodil Delight. These are all the dark versions of the Stampin' Blend. So we also have light versions. We have light and dark. And um, oh, well, I just colored that yellow. I was just thinking maybe I would like to color that blue instead, but it's done. I'd like to know what are you guys doing today? Are you stamping? Is it raining? Are you shopping? I still have one more of the grab bags left over. I showed it in my video the other night. And I have one more grab bag. So the next person to claim it um, and place an order on my website of $40 or more is going to get this little extra surprise in the mail from me. There's two different products in there and um, it can be yours. So if you want to just say claim grab bag and then get your order in um, by tonight and I'll get that in the mail to you tomorrow. Woohoo! Yay for free stuff. All right, we have colored with the blends. Now we're going to apply the adhesive sheet. Oh, Marion, you're driving just across the Georgia-Florida border. 
Uh, safe travels. Enjoy Florida, Mary Ellen. I, I'm ready for some beach, man. It's a long winter, and it's finally starting to get nice here in Illinois, but this rain is kind of a buzzkill. Like, I'm not loving it. But it's supposed to be nice this weekend for Easter, so hopefully we will have a quiet Easter, but we might be making a trip to Georgia. Not to go to a beach. There's not beaches in Georgia. Is there beaches? Oh, we're landlocked, right? Oh, golly. My head hurts. All right, ladies. I kind of did that without talking. I peeled off the... Um, adhesive sheets and then I put it face down on top of the back the side that I colored on okay so adhesive sheet you're just gonna make sure that it is it is good there and then we're going to peel back the adhesive sheet and so all the sticky transfers to the window sheets like a bat and then we are going to take that foil and when I was making it last night, I told Anna, I said, just crumple it up into a ball and straighten it out. And she, we were having a hard time straightening it out from the ball because it was tearing. So um, you want to crumple your foil, but I would recommend at least maybe this foil is just really like thick and heavy. Um, just like crumple it straight in your hands, if that makes sense. Um, I think the more crumpled, the better. Um, and then, you know, aluminum foil has a shiny side and it has a dull side. And so you want to put this shiny side down onto the sticky, the sticky butterfly. And smooth it out. And pushing all that foil onto the window sheet so that it's making contact with the adhesive. This reminds me of the faux silk technique. Have you guys ever done that with tissue paper? Um, it's sort of similar where you cover your cardstock with adhesive and then you crinkle up um, tissue paper and then cover cover it and you instead of behind you would cover it on top okay after we put that on then we're just gonna cut it out look at that isn't it just it's so pretty and so easy I'm trying to remember now, Barb, what Barb did. I feel like maybe she did like a dragonfly or a hummingbird. Maybe she did a butterfly too. I don't remember if she used this stamp set or just suggested this stamp set. But this stamp set is just so perfect for this technique. Who would have thought that was foil? <laughs> Did you guess? Did you guess that it was foil when you saw the cards? Holy smokes, guys, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so pretty. I just love it. So right here, I can tell there's like a little bit of foil that torn so you can see through it. Um, this is not a very big piece, so I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to be black behind it. But if you had a piece in the middle that was missing, I would just put a little bit of adhesive and then cover it with foil um, so that you don't have any tears and holes. Okay, I, I was having some struggles getting the foil to attach to the paper. And so what I did was I, I think that tear and tape is the best option. So let me put the rest of the card together and I will show you that part. Um, I did my layers a little bit different when I was trying to decide on the layout for the card. And um, that's all getting all weird on me. So I started with the yellow layer on the bottom, centering it in the card. And then I put this down and then this one. So normally like you would have this underneath, but I since not a lot of the blue shows, I wanted it to show just a little bit more. So I kind of reverse that and it goes in between the layers, but I think, I think it works. Okay, so I'm gonna glue that down next. Again, this um, Bermuda Bay piece is one and a half by five and a half. And the daffodil was three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Love this color combination. I, I don't use daffodil enough. Like, I really should use it more. I always thought that it was really bright 
And then Pineapple Punch came along, and then I was like, you know what? Daffodil is really not that bright. It's really kind of a, a nice, soft color for spring. I mean, it's not soft like so saffron, but it's compared to Pineapple Punch, it's just more um, not so in your face. <laughs> Pineapple Punch. Did I put the wrong side up? Yeah, whatever. Um, okay, tear and tape. Where did I put you? So this is what I was doing. Oh, snap. I forgot my ribbons. <laughs> I wonder if I can bring this back up. Yes. I didn't push down that hard, so it's still movable. I'm the master. Master of removing. I'm cutting pieces of the ribbon. I'm just gonna cut the ends. Oops, I wanted to go the other way on that. Like that. And then So we're gonna put a little bit of adhesive down and have these stick out. Snail adhesive doesn't totally cut it, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of tear and tape across the ends so that they are secure and don't, don't come off. Now we'll do this with dimensionals right over the top. Okay, push down and I'm using tear and tape to attach the butterfly. So I'm going to go across the wings right on the cardstock. So what other stamp sets would you guys do this technique with? What are you thinking that you would like to see stained glass besides this awesome butterfly? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, there is the card. But you know, I was telling Jim, that's my husband. I said, um, I feel like cards are naked without words on the front. And um, so I was trying to figure out what to put on here. And there's this skinny one, always thinking of you. And so I was playing around like with a banner across here. And I felt like it just detracted from the butterfly so much. Like this is such a, a wow focal point. So I skipped it. Like I'm not doing, I'm not doing it so instead of words on the outside I'm gonna stamp on the inside this says happy birthday may your day be as beautiful as you are and so I'm gonna just stamp that and then oh my gosh did I get any ink on there I don't think so then I'll just glue that on the inside all right there is the finished card what do you think do you love it? Is this a technique that you will try at home? Okay, a quick note before I wrap up. Let me put these to the side a little bit. Stays on is like, it's crazy ink. It really is, it kind of sticks to the block. And so the very best thing to clean the stays on. I have the chamois, I have the Stampin' Mist, but stays on cleaner. And I'm pretty sure we still have this in the catalog, right? I don't just have this from past I'm trying to peek in the catalog <laughs> before I tell you to buy it. <laughs> um, oh, oh, snap. Come on. Um, stays on, stays on. There we go. Stays on. Where is the cleaners? Yes. Okay. Stays on cleaner. The label is different, but it's the same thing. Stays on cleaner. So this is the best thing to clean stays off. Stays on off your rubber stamps. I have to tell you, I try to avoid using stays on with photopolymer. It's just, 
wreaks havoc on it. Okay, so this stays on cleaner on the rubber. Look how awesome this is going to come off. I don't know if you can see my scrub pad. I love my little scrub pad, though I haven't used it in a while since I have the chamois. Look at that. Ha! Oh, it cleans it right off. It's amazing. There might be enough on my pad now. Yeah, where it's going to just come right off on that stamp. Okay, so stays on ink. You really got to get some stays on cleaner. And, um, and that cleans it off beautifully. The other thing I wanted to show you is the new stamp and storage. Do you guys have some of these? I'm really excited. Even though I already have a, um, an ink hold holder, an ink pad holder, I was super excited about getting the containers for the um, markers. <laughs> I'm sorry, like my camera is so close, I, I can't really zoom out on this. I wonder if I can, let me see if I can bring my camera up a little bit. Hold on, we might get shaky. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so this is two packages and a lid. The stamp and storage is really cool. It comes with the, there's five in a package for the stamp and blends and they're trays. So you can have them be as high or low as you want. So I, I don't love to color, so th these are all my Stampin' Blends. I don't have a lot of them. So I can remove the empty trays and just have it be these. I can stack them um, differently, and these all coordinate with the, um, the ink pad trays, and there's an open storage cube. There's two different lids. One of them is the flat lid, and the other one is the tray lid. Um, like this to hold your ink refills. Now, unfortunately, the, the ink pad and marker storage is um, not orderable because it was so popular, it sold out. And the open storage cube is not orderable. They'll both be back in July, around July 1st, but you can still get the Stampin' Blend storage trays. So if you have some Stampin' Blends, this is an awesome way to store them. Nice and flat, and you can keep six, six markers on each tray so five comes in a package the stamp and blend storage trays are $14 for the five and then the lid is separate so you want to make sure to get that too it's three dollars um, and like I said there's two options you can get the tray or you can get just the lid but um, I'm just gonna put my I'm gonna put my markers right back down here I got the blues here and the yellow goes here and the purple there I'll take that back to back to my office. All right, that is it for me today, ladies. Like I said, I do have one more grab bag left. If you want to place an order at juliedavison.com slash shop, write grab bag in the comments here. If more than one person does, I'll make up another grab bag. That's okay. This is a today only special though. So if you want a grab bag, uh, place an order in my online store, $40 and comment grab bag on this video so that I know um, that you are claiming a grab bag and I'll send that to you in the mail for free. Plus when you order $40 or more, you get a free make and take kit from me at the end of the month as well. So um, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this technique. Thanks so much for watching, for liking, sharing, and commenting. I really appreciate all of you so much. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.